Firebase Auth is a secure authentication system that allows users to sign in and sign up for your application. It allows federated identity through providers like Facebook, Twitter, and of course Google. Now, when doing this, your users generally demand a rich user experience, and providing this, as well as solving identity problems, can be a lot of work. Luckily, Firebase Auth UI makes all of this really easy, and in this video, I'll show you how to do sign in and sign up with Google in an Android app, as well as using email password combinations. Before we start, you'll need to create a Firebase project and then enable authentication on it. The console will provide you with code snippets that you can put into your app. Let's take a look. Here you can see I have a project set up in Firebase console. I've associated it with an Android app in the typical way. Then in the authentication tab, I set up email password and Google as my sign-in providers. And that's all I need to do in the console. If you don't have it already, be sure to get the googleservices.json file for your app by going to the app in the overview and then clicking Settings. Firebase UI is open source and it contains a sample app that shows you how to do sign-in flows. You can download the source code for the app at this link. I'll be using that app to demonstrate how sign-in works, so let's take a look. Here's the Firebase UI sample app in action. When you start it, it will ask if you want a chat activity, an AuthUI demo, or storage image demo. Pick the AuthUI demo and you'll see this screen. I'm using the Google Services JSON file that I just downloaded from the console, and there where I picked email and Google as my authentication providers. As such, it will show that the Facebook and Twitter services are not configured. Let's look first at how email sign-in works. So just check email and leave Google unchecked. Press Start, and the first thing that you might see is a list like this. This is a list of the emails that I've configured in SmartLock for passwords, i.e., other emails that are associated with my main account on this phone. It's a nice shortcut for your users, and if they want to use the, one of those emails as an associated ID. But I'm going to say none of the above, and what will happen is I can now sign up with a new email. I'll just enter something. I'm then asked to specify first and last name as well as the password for this account. Remember, this isn't the password for that email address on its host. It's the password that the person identified by this email address will use to sign into this app. Once I save it, I'm asked to save it also with SmartLock. I'll say yes. I'm now signed into the app, and if I sign out and try to sign back in again, the framework is smart enough to know that I had previously tried to sign in with this identity, and it will just allow me to use it. You just saw a lot of functionality that makes your user experience a lot easier. And you probably thought that that would take a lot of code. Well, guess what? It really didn't, as much of this flow was handled for you by the AuthUI classes. Let's take a look at how they did it next. In the source code, find the auth UI activity. It should be in the com.firebase.uidemo namespace, as you can see here. Scroll down to find the sign in function. This is what gets called when the user clicks the sign in button. You'll see it starts an activity for the result from creating an intent builder for the auth UI class. This class is part of the Firebase auth UI framework and is completely open source. You can see it here. When we start the activity, we give it a code, or C sign in, so that when Android detects an activity result, it will give you a callback with that activity code. And you can see that here. Upon the activity being or C sign in, we call handle sign in response. In this function, we simply handle the different sign in conditions. If the sign in was canceled or failed for no network, we can show a snack bar. Otherwise, if it was OK, we can start a new activity, the signed in activity, passing it the data. The signed in activity renders the you are signed in message. It's really that simple. What's really neat about this code and this class is that it encapsulates the entire user flow, signing up, signing in, using smart lock, stuff like that. Earlier, we left Google turned off. So now let's turn it on, and we'll see what it looks like to go through that user flow. 
and we didn't write any extra code to do it. Now when I run my app, I will see that when I try to sign in that I have two options. I'll pick the sign in with Google one and I'll get a list of Google accounts I use on this device. There's only one, so let me just pick it. You can see that I get signed in and the basic profile information from my Google account is given to the app. If I sign out and try again, this time supposing I don't want to use that account, I can select Add Account. This will take me through the standard Google flow for either adding an existing account to this device to sign into the app or just creating a new account. So if I, for example, sign in with a different Gmail account, I'll get taken into the app. Subsequently, when I try to sign in with Smart Lock or just Google sign in from the button, I'll get the ability to choose this account, saving me from having to remember. And as I save the password with Smart Lock, I can sign in without a password. This is optional, of course, but I just chose to do it that way. And that's it. That's how easy it is to use the powerful open source AuthUI libraries to add a full sign in, sign up experience to your app that uses the standard Google workflows or gives you the ability to have your own email based identity provider in a way that's simple to implement and friendly for your users. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button.